100 years is very exceptional. Exceptional things happen to an exceptional people. It is said that the reward of a life is not how long it is live, but the wealth of the value it bequeaths. One man whose achievement remain a lesson to everyone that admires greatness, and in whom the Almighty God has restricted nothing good in, Parkintola Williams. To him is God's grace in abundance. The defining moment early in my life was starting my own business as a chartered accountant in practice and how I have got to make two ends meet. That's principally the defining moment. I have, I know I have to struggle and I did not expect uh, help from any bank. No bank would lend a newly qualified accountant money. And I hope that that has changed. Okay. The final moment in, early in my life was how do I get clients? I've been away from Nigeria for five to six years. And obviously, it's a long time. And I didn't come back home for once. So, it was not easy making a start. My biggest challenge principally was how to, to acquire businesses that will pay the, my own maintenance it's been my long ambition to create something in the field of accountancy. And I did not regret being the first Nigerian to establish the firm of chartered accountancy. In line with this interview with Parkintola Williams to celebrate his 100th year's birthday, as some of his friends to wish him and how to describe the person of Parkintola Williams, sit back and watch. Professor Aya Oko Aya. I started hearing about him when I was still in school. That tells you how long ago he appeared on the Nigerian scene. But my real personal contact with him was when, around 1995, late Dr. Nandia Zimbabwe, the first president of General Dr. Kapali and myself So that is the I got his consent to establish the Public Policy Research and Analysis Center here in Lagos with the mandate to award the Z Prize in Leadership to, uh, to get his name associated with that, which he gave. And one of the early people that learned that uh, that remarkable which under my chairmanship at the time, not only a particular witness, but a late Yerere, late Mandela, and so on. But we won the prize. So it was, it was an important prize because it is the way it is now. Uh, uh, let me say this. 
when we choose it as one of the pioneer leaders, uh, that was necessary to go and see him because he was noted for refusing all awards, GTC, whatever. He has always refused to accept it. But when myself and uh, General Duncan Pali went to see and explained to him what we were trying to do, he said first because it's associated with six years, he would accept it. Professor Wali Omoli, OFR. Paul Akinola will have to remain the quintessential role model. As you can spend days and days describing attributes of great creation of God. It's one to be created well. Is another to sustain it. A number of people are talented. It's like Nigeria is talented. Where are we? But is a man that is highly organized, go to his office in the morning, as appropriate, and keep time. Not only his office, all his programs. You invite Parkinson Williams to a function. If you are not careful, you get there before you. The moment he says, I'm coming. I had to struggle when I was going to the service because uh, the chairman, you know, I had to, uh, it was six o'clock dinner. I had to get down by five. <laughs> because I could, it's very honorable. That, when you talk about honor, these are elements of honor. Dignity. Because for him to get there before me at his nineties to chair his 70th body, that was a great honor for me. Then it will be such a disgrace for me to, for him to be there. He keeps his time so meticulously. Yes, professionally, the first accountant of his level in the continent. Not, not in Nigeria, in the continent. Chief Philip Asiodu. He has achieved so much. First, I think, is the first in European terms of qualified professional. African, African chartered accountants. But more important to that, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the very few Nigerians who created professional partnerships which have lasted beyond their retirement and grown. He started his um, accounting firm, I think, around 19... 52 or so, and um, it grew. He had Nigerian partners. He made, he retired, you know, from practice about 1983. And since then, other people have succeeded him in leading the firm, Akintola Williams. First, he partnered with Tishwash. And now, in fact, is one of the is Akintola Williams Deloitte. Now, it's a remarkable achievement because before accountancy, you know, we had many lawyers. But unlike the firm which I use in England, or used to use as a law firm, has more than 200 partners. But there is no big Nigerian law firm which has but he managed to achieve in accountancy because I believe that the group now has scores of accountants and about and hundreds of professionals.
Patrick Femi Olopade. Well, it's interesting that the old man has described me as a friend. Uh, I met him many years ago, but I became closer to him some 47 years ago when I became a member of the Metropolitan Club. And uh, I've seen in him certain qualities and attributes which makes you feel proud that you are a Nigerian. Uh, his upbringing and background is clear in his way of doing things. His composure was first class. Uh, and you cannot sit down with uh, Mr. Akintola Williams for a few minutes without getting the vibration of a pure gentleman coming to you. Professor Giwa Osage. Well, uh, Kintola Williams is a household name in Nigeria. Um, we know uh, that you can't think of accountancy in Nigeria, in uh, West Africa, without uh, mentioning uh, Kintola Williams. He's a pioneer chartered accountant uh, in Nigeria. Um, we know, of course, that uh, his younger brother was also a, a major player in the legal field, the late Chief F.R.A. Williams. Patricia Williams is um, a very reassuring, reliable, uh, stable person uh, who you can uh, ask for advice and he will tell you the truth. He never seems to be in a hurry to do anything, and yet he gets all his tasks done. He inspires confidence in his uh, mentees and contemporaries, and uh, he is showing by his longevity that you don't have to be abstinent in many things, that sometimes it pays you better to be a moderate. He is a moderate in many things. Uh, when he was younger, uh, he did uh, drink and socialize, but he wasn't somebody that you could say, oh, he's drinking all the time. He wasn't into that at all. <laughs> Senator B. Drew Jai. A very genial, cerebral, and present personality. Humble despite his many accomplishments. I think uh, he's a man one can pray by. Everybody would like to live up to a hundred. It's a great achievement. Apart from that, Papa Akedola came from a family that has been a blessing to Nigeria. And a bad family, the Williams family, that produced two almost, I would say, genius, two geniuses, professional leaders in, in two great professions in Nigeria, law and accountancy. The junior brother of Papa, uh, the celebrant, chief, wrote to me, Frederick Rotimer Alade Williams was the first man to earn the Queen's Council <coughs> honor in the profession as far back as 1958-59. Chief Opera Benson. He was a very good friend of my late husband, Otomati O.S. Benson. And at that time, we used to see him quite often we shall visit each other. And I find Chief Akintola Williams, I found him at that time, and I know he still is, a very decent gentleman, a Nigerian of stature, someone who went into the profession that he really loved, that made so many contributions to that. And I think that uh, as he has lived to be a hundred years, what I would say in a few days' time, he must have been 
the type of person that God has placed his hand upon. I think that he has really lived a good life. He has contributed to the development of Nigeria in the profession, accounting profession. And I think there are not very many accountants today who will say that they have not heard of Chief Akintola Williams. I believe that uh, as he continues to move on, no matter what his physical status might be, he has a mind that is quite good and positive towards this country, towards individuals. He has many friends, he has families, and I will wish all of them, all of them, all of them, a very, very, very good life, which I think he has really started for them while he's on the ground here. My husband and him kept company all the time because as my husband got older, he visited the older friends himself and all of them got together and talked to each other about this country in the early years, what they hoped would happen and things like that. So I think that uh, he has lived a wonderful life and I think Nigerians do appreciate him, including myself. Akitola is a very wonderful human being, a wonderful Nigerian who has done very much in the Nigerian educational sector, particularly accountancy. In the first place, I see Pa Akitola, when you look at him very well, you will maybe know or you don't know, he is the first African qualified chartered accountant. Pa is a pride to all Nigerians. And as I always tell people, if you have some dozens of Pa Akintola to manage the affairs of Nigeria, Nigeria will have been a paradise because Pa is very honest, dedicated, and his integrity is number one. So as far as Pa is concerned, I think it's a remarkably wonderful human being. So many things you can say about Parkintola. Talk about stock exchange in the financial sector. He has built the stock exchange from the beginning up to and including now. You can go and check. And you can see at the early stage, the whole thing was not working well. But now the stock exchange has dramatically change that you can do everything electronics online you know in those days they are sending your share something they are stealing it and everything but it's generally modernized internationally i think that's one thing i know very well and particular to when you look at memory in the early days i don't know whether you know it uh, you know, they, they call something Uduji. Uduji uh, affair. That's when Nigerians want to change the status of salary in Nigeria. I think he was part of the Uduji Commission, which he played a very prominent role there at that time. <laughs> very rare. They come in a generation. You don't just have them. They are not often. They are not many. Nation builders are not many. Role models are not many. We have a dash of them in our nation. But for me as a person, I want to rejoice with him on behalf of myself, on behalf of my family, on behalf of my entire chambers. We felicitate with him. 
We are excited about him, about his courage, about his achievements, about his personality, about his integrity, about his honesty, about his sincerity, about his righteousness. And that, you know, the Yoruba people will say, when you see an elder who is worthy to be so called, the Yoruba man will say that Agba Tonfin Toro Agba is an Agba. Let me not say it. Is an Agba. Tonfin Toro Agba. And what do I mean? It's when you look at, you look upon him, you look unto him, you say, God, give me the grace to be like Chief Akintola. Give me the grace to be like Chief Akintola Williams. Give me the grace to be as accomplished as he is. Give me the grace to be as kind as he is. Give me the grace to be as loving as he is. Give me the grace to be as intelligent as he is. Give me the grace to attain that age. <music>
that he became a reference point in the development of businesses and the accounting profession. The first thing that struck me about him, ever before I met him, is a big reputation and stature had always uh, attracted me. But what really baffled me was that I was a, a legal advisor and company secretary to the Nigerian Industrial Development Bank. And we wanted to appoint a receiver manager for if one of the companies that borrowed money from here is a man whom I call uncle. I should be the one who should go to him. But he drove himself to my home then in Apapa to come and consult with me. That really struck me. In those days, whether Nigerian, foreign, non-Nigerian, and looking for accounting services, audit services, if you like to be pointed. Yeah. One of the first names that will crop up in the minds of these business people is the firm of Akitola Williams. of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, where I know he was one of the founding fathers. And I do believe that there are so many legacies he's left behind that would make everybody remember him. So I can nicely say, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. We wish you long life in health and God's continued guidance. Kintola William is uh, a fantastic icon for this country and um, he's somebody that you started hearing about uh, earlier on in your life and you hear about him because he represented the best in his profession. He's a professional professional. When I, what I mean by that is that there are professionals that start up their profession and they put money before the profession. There are people that start up their profession, when they make money, they now divert the, their interests, either become political, you know, they get into politics in order to make to become famous. But this is a man that has talked to his profession, purely his profession, dedicated his life to his profession and made it made it tick. Yes, he's a father to me. Okay sir. Like to many others. Like Senior Body Emmanuel, um, Chief Shoneko, former head of state, and many, many others. He's not a senior, he's a uh, Baba, he's a father to us, mm. in every sense of the word. I call him Baba, and I'm, I'm talk, most of the time, I would like to prostrate to beat him. He mentored a lot of people particularly people like my senior brother, Bode Emmanuel, who was um, as a chartered accountant, 
many people in Enugu to be one of the original, to be very, the, one of the earliest federal accountants who perform very well in this country. And um, also, he was an older mayor, and that um, particular village is synonymous with accounting education and seniority in this country. Right from the beginning of my career, I've had the privilege of being closely associated uh, with uh, Chief Akintola Williams. I've talked about the, his, uh, his establishment, Akintola Williams, uh, being a global player on the auditing and financial services uh, sector. Um, in my relationship with him, it's gone more than just extending professional services to various organizations I worked. He has been, many people may not know, a very big player in developing the arts in Nigeria. So indeed, uh, it's a very happy occasion that the good Lord has kept him uh, this long. It's a reference point. It's a reference point for what everybody you know, can yearn to achieve in their various fields. So I would like to join others in congratulating our father, Akintola Williams, on reaching this right age of uh, 100 years. specimen of what God had wanted humans. His humility, his candor, his intelligence, and at the same time, the ability and the capacity to create an atmosphere where one feels relaxed talking to such a well-known but an understated celebrity. There are so many things one can learn from his life. I wish him the greatest peace of mind that God can give to anybody. They say health is wealth. What we somehow have is that in spite of the globally recognized importance of this sector in Nigeria, the most populous nation and indeed largest economy in Africa, with its abundant human and material resources and large markets, the health sector has remained seemingly neglected. 
It is even more disturbing that in the 21st century, when the rest of the world is strategizing and realigning for strong and sustainable economic expansion, the self-acclaimed giant of Africa is still battling with corruption, inadequate infrastructure, bad roads, among others. A focus on the healthcare sector today is a key player in the health maintenance organization, the managing director of Healthcare International, in person of Mr. Tosin Awoshika. And a focus on the Nigerian Dental Association is the national president in person of Dr. Omoshibo, evening Eshikena. And looking at the harbor and traditional sector also is a group managing director of Yemkem Group in person of Mr. Akintude Ishola Ayeni. We're trying to create greater awareness to the man on the street for him to be able to understand that it's better for him to have a health plan. Because some of the costs, about most of the health plans, cost considerably lower than what people spend on their recharge cards on a monthly basis. And that's the message we're trying to sell out to people, for them to understand that when you have a health plan, it makes it easier for you. You know, it takes, the, it takes away the pressure. Unfortunately, a lot of times you have a lot of people, like I said at the beginning, running into the hospital only when those conditions have become very critical. Some of those things are things that could have been taken care of much earlier if they had, been, if they had access to healthcare and if they had been visiting the hospitals. There are people who have lived with some conditions for several years because they have been able to, you know, maintain themselves properly, you know, th that way. So we're trying to reach out to as many people as possible and get them to understand that having a health plan is supposed to be as important as maybe carrying your mobile phone. to carry the, the message out there to the public that yes, there's a need for them to have a health insurance plans. If you look at 10 organizations that are doing, that have health plans today, about eight are practically forcing the scheme on their staff. Because yes, they've seen it as the most effective way of taking care of the health of their workers. I'm talking about the corporate entities. Most of them have seen it as, look, this is the most effective way in which we can get people to, to have access to good quality health care. But most people would rather not. Because in this environment, more emphasis is placed on curative rather than preventive. Tell most people to do health checks. They would rather not. It is when they fall ill that they want to run to the hospital. Most people would go to the hospital only when that situation is very critical. And that is why more often than not, visits to the hospitals are near emergencies. And in the civilized world, most of the times when people go into the hospital, they are called emergency room. That's what, what we call, what is almost like routine to us is emergency in a lot of places because people I can bet if you walk down the road, nine, if you're supposed to have half a person, nine persons out of ten do not even know their health, vital health statistics, not to talk of having done some health checks and all of that. So that is the environment in which we're working in. So, so, so a greater number of the times, you are, I mean, people going to the hospital are battling. And unfortunately, too, in some cases, I'm not saying all, the providers are also not helping. Because yes, in a good number of times, when such people present in the hospitals and the providers want to treat, knowing that most of these people are under health plans and the like, they want to take maximum advantage. 
I mean, I've, 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 we've had to grapple with situations where, for instance, to, to find out whether someone, that someone's uh, sugar level is high, a provider writes out about six tests, when maybe one or two could have given you the answer. Of course, they want to take maximum advantage. So those are the challenges that HMOs have to deal with. And because of that, a lot of people feel we're not doing as much as we could do. I know we can do better, but believe me, we're working in an environment which isn't very, very friendly. Look, let me say something. Let me give, let me give an example which I think is, will be easiest. One, we're called middlemen. A terminology I find very absurd, but good enough. Middlemen, because other than the NHIS, 100% of clients that visit hospitals have been sourced and marketed by HMOs. So please, where is the middleman? I am the one who has got to look for these clients. I am passing them on to the hospital to receive care. That does not make me a middleman. The hospitals were there prior to my going to market these people. Why didn't the hospitals go there? That is the perception. People run away from the dentist because they think everything about the dentist is to is extraction. But I like to say here that there's a lot more the dentist does. Um, it's only when there's no early reports to the dentist that will now result in the tooth getting badly broken down and will now bring about the, the initial fear of the person from visiting the dentist. So early visit to the dentist can bring about many more solutions that are different from extraction. We recommend that the average person visits the dentist twice a year, that is uh, every six months. But for those who have some underlying medical conditions, we advise that they visit their dentist more frequently, especially when they notice any problem in the mouth. Improvements in the awareness of oral health care in Nigeria as it is presently as compared to the past. People readily come to go to the dental clinic with a view of um, wanting to uh, clean their teeth, unlike in the past. And in Nigeria, I must say that we are also doing fairly well with our oral hygiene care. People brush twice, uh, once a day, most people brush once a day, but we're trying to improve uh, and uh, advise that people have more behavioral change by adopting uh, the habit of brushing twice daily, that is brushing in the morning and also before bedtime. So there's a lot of improvement presently. The enamel is the outer covering of the tooth, the first layer of the tooth. But after the layer of the tooth, we have other layers like the dentin and the pulp chamber that are a bit uh, softer than the enamel. So uh, enamel is quite strong and it only takes a poor oral hygiene or poor oral health mouth care that brings about the destruction of enamel. Traditional medicine has come to stay in Nigeria as a country, but the fact that people are now conscious of their health, and secondly, people prefer to use natural medicine because of the less side effects in the body system. And uh, if you look at it very well now, you will see that um, the, there are a lot of people in the practice now. We have a lot of uh, other practitioners now in Nigeria but the fact that people are so much interested in the use of the natural medicine in Nigeria. That is why, if you look at it globally, 
it's not only in Nigeria, but globally we see that the whole world they are very keen about using the word natural medicine or natural products. But in the case of the natural medicine, it is very, number one, it's affordable, it's not much expensive, then it's very, it's, it's accessible, and uh, it works, although gradually in the body system, but the side effect is very, very less. Even at times, the side effect is even zero, is at zero level. So, and that is why people are very much interested in, in using natural medicine. It's not even natural medicine, though, even natural products, generally, because uh, people are very much in using something that is of no less side effect. Professor Lambo, during his time, said that an African disease needs African medicine. There are some diseases in this country of Nigeria that is only indigenous herbal product that can actually tackle it. Most of these foreign herbal products, you don't even know the, the components, you don't know the raw material, you don't know the, 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 the raw materials put together to produce these drugs. And the fact is that their body system now, the body system, the body chemistry of the Chinese is different from Nigerian body chemistry. The body chemistry of Indonesia is different from our body chemistry. But they use the word from because it's imported. You see, that mentality of Nigerians towards our own indigenous product is still very bad. And that is why the economy of this country is not developing.